Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks for clicking, thanks for watching. If you've been here before, welcome back. For those of you who do not know, my name is Chemis and I have a kitchen appliance fetish. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the four main types of juicers, two of which most people will be familiar with. You have centrifugal, slow slash masticating, twin gear, and cold press. Now, they all have their pros and cons and they all fall into different price brackets. Centrifugal juicers are best suited to people who just wanna juice and drink, juicing for nutritional benefits but with minimal effort. Some of the pros of this type of juicer are that they have few moving parts, so they're quick and easy to assemble and clean. They're the fastest at extracting juice from fruits and vegetables. They handle soft fruits really well and they stand upright so they take less space on your counter. Not to mention they're the least expensive juices you're gonna find on the market today. The cons, however, are the speed. These juices spin around 12,000 rounds per minute, which means they're gonna be diluting your juice pretty much as soon as you're putting the fruits and vegetables inside the feed tube. They oxidize your juice, which means you're gonna get a lot more foam on the top, and they're very noisy. They don't handle leafy greens very well, such as wheatgrass, spinach, or kale, and the juice doesn't stay fresh very long. So it's recommended you drink it quite quickly because it does separate within a matter of minutes. Also, the pulp is usually quite wet, so the yield of juice isn't that high. But these are the most common types of juices you'll find in today's households. Slow juicers, sometimes known as masticating, are ideal for people who want to maximize their nutrient intake from juicing and don't mind spending a little bit more time to do so. Some of the pros of this type of juicer are that they have a high juice yield extraction of juice compared to centrifugal. They can juice leafy greens fairly easily, such as spinach, kale, and wheatgrass. There's less oxidation because they usually have 80 to 100 rounds per minute. Some even go down to 60. Juices tend to last longer than centrifugal, on average three days. Some models can actually meal grain, make nut butter, baby food, even frozen fruit desserts. And most models of slow juices will make nut milk with the right preparation. The cons, however, are that they have small feed tubes, so prep work is more expensive. Usually they do cost more than centrifugal, and depending if you have a vertical or horizontal, they can take up more counter space and be a bit more bulky. Twin gears, the expert level of juicing. These are ideal for the person who sees juicing as a way of life. The pros of this type of juicer are that they're believed to extract the most nutrients from fruits and vegetables when compared to centrifugal and slow juicers. They can make baby food, nut butter, sorbets, and even pasta. They're also really, really quiet. The cons, however, they're very expensive when compared to centrifugal and slow juicers. They're slow and they take up a lot of counter space because they are horizontal. And lastly, they can be fairly hard to clean. There's a lot of small moving parts, narrow tubes, a lot of food stuff can get stuck in there. Cold press juicers, sometimes known as pneumatic or hydraulic. These are for the juicers who are doing 24 seven juicing. They probably have a home business doing juices. The pros of this type of juicer, it's gonna extract the most nutrients possible from your fruits and vegetables. You're gonna be able to store the juice up to five days in a fridge, creates little to no foam, minimal oxidation, and it's gonna give you the purest juice you will get, on average 99% liquid, less than 1% of the pulp. You can also make nut milks with them and even nut oils. The cons, however, they're ridiculously expensive. The current home models tend to be quite cumbersome, quite difficult to clean and very bulky. So they're a lot more suited to commercial use. The other downside is that they use bags. You have to put the fruits and vegetables in the bag to contain the pulp. Now that I've been through the juices, I will go through the juicer that I have with you, just to give you a little bit of information about it. So first of all, it is a um, vertical slow juicer. This one is made by Sage. It's called the Big Squeeze. I've had it now for about a year and a half, I'd say. Could be a little bit longer. Um, and with this one, it comes with a few parts, which I'm gonna take it apart just to show you, okay? It comes with your tamp or your pusher, some people might call it. Two containers. One is for pulp, which has a handle on the side, and then one for the juice, which has a lip, and it has measurements on the side here, um, and they store together like this. 
top, which screws off. So this is your top. And here you have your two different feeding holes. So then you have um, the inside part of the juicer. The main part of it is the arga. Now the arga, as you'll see, spins around and it has grooves all around it which help um, the fruit and vegetable get pushed down. It's quite heavy um, and they usually need to be because this is where the power is coming from. Obviously the motor, but this is what's actually doing the work. You've got your mesh basket here. Now inside here it has grooves as well which help to kind of break up the fruits and vegetables. So what this does goes on here and it helps to reduce the foam. And then you've got your base here. Pulp is going to come from here, juice is going to come from here and you have a stopper okay, here. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to make almond milk. It's very very simple. You only need two main ingredients which are almonds and water and for this I would say use filtered water it, where possible. Mm -hmm. For this recipe I do it by um, a basic guide of 100 grams of almonds to around about six to eight hundred milliliters of water. Mm -hmm. You soak your nuts, in this case almonds, overnight. Once you've soaked them remove that water, give them a rinse and then you use fresh water. Now I've got 600 milliliters of water in both of these um, because I've got 200 grams of almonds. I've rinsed and washed my almonds. What you need to do is you need to put some of your almonds in and some of the water in. And you just keep doing that until it's all used up. I've also got the stopper closed because I want some of that um, to be incorporated. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the pulp through again. If you feel that something may be stuck or clogged, it also has a reverse button. Okay, and that's it. So from this, you can see I've actually got quite a good amount. It's about 1200 milliliters. I'll pop it in this so I can put it in the fridge. But before I do that, I will just um, sift it. This is what I like to do. I get my sieve. I've got my funnel. So this usually will last you round about, say, three days. I do um, breakfast smoothies. So with this, I'll use this up within three days. It's absolutely fine. That's how you make juice in a um, slow juicer. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I'm more than happy to answer them. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. For those of you that want to know how to make the almond milk within a blender, as I said, I would let you know. So, um, the process is very similar to how it was in the juicer. The main difference is obviously you're using a blender. Um, so what you're going to need is, you're going to need your almonds, you're going to need your water, but you'll also need a nut milk bag. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your almonds and you'll place them in the blender with fresh water. And then you would place anything that you're going to use to flavor it at the same time. You will put your dates in here or you put like your drop of vanilla or whatever it is, break them down and then you can put it on the high speed. And then you're going to pour all of that through your nut milk bag and you're going to strain it out. You should use a nut milk bag just because when it's blending um, it doesn't get it as fine as when you're using it in the juice so i would do 100 mil 100 grams of almonds and about six to eight hundred milliliters of water and then i would do a second batch whereas with the juicer, I was able to do it all in one go. So with the um, blender, you'll find that it's going to be a lot more foamy and a lot, and a lot frothier than it will be with the juicer. And I would recommend using the blender version um, quicker than using the juicer version. Yeah? But yeah, basically that's it. You, you can make almond milk in a juicer or a blender. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that.